I've always been one of those people who thought Mark Ruffalo is the best Bruce Banner. No doubt in my mind. The way he speaks, the way he stands, the way he emotes, his shy and awkward mannerisms, the way he spouts scientific jargon, his etiquette with the other teammates. I love it. He just nails that lonely, introspective Bruce that I want to see. That shy, timid scientist with a dark secret. I've had many debates and conversations about it, and I've always been pretty adamant that he was the one. Maybe his character declined in later movies, but if I'm taking the best performance from one single movie, I'm going with Mark Ruffalo in The Avengers. I've always liked Edward Norton's Hulk a little better, but I was never really compelled with his take on Bruce. It's just Ed Norton playing Ed Norton. Yes, he's saying scientific things, and he's trying to be this character, but all I can see is Ed Norton being a regular dude. Because of his previous performances where he completely transforms himself, and becomes a different person, I guess I just expected more. It always felt like he was just bored instead of intentionally delivering this nuanced performance. I didn't see a scientist. I just saw an actor. Not a bad performance, but utterly forgettable. But after re-watching The Incredible Hulk recently, what the fuck was I thinking? I was completely wrong about this. After years and years of spouting this Mark Ruffalo rhetoric, I think I may have been disillusioned misinformed, ignorant, close-minded, uneducated, just flat out wrong. And I think the past couple of years have really helped shape that picture for me. Hindsight and perspective are a beautiful thing, and they're a big part of growing up and maturing in this life. Guys, realizing you were wrong about a fictional character is a main ingredient for a successful and happy existence. Yes, my favorite performance of the Hulk is in The Avengers, but there comes a time where the quantity overshadows the quality, when the sheer number of bad portrayals supersede the one great one. Norton's Hulk never had the ability to be bad because he was only in one movie. Maybe it's not at the top of the MCU, but it's pretty good and it's not a piece of trash like some people say it is. He never got the chance to have a confusing, messy, and rushed story arc over a 10 year period that borderline assassinated his character. He never got the opportunity to become a meme a joke, a disappointment, a loser, a waste of space, a complete contradiction to his comic book counterpart. Much like Tupac or Nirvana, he simply wasn't around long enough to make anything truly terrible. His story in The Incredible Hulk was actually really engaging and understood the core foundation of the character. The constant battle within himself to control the monstrous entity. More than anything, the story of Hulk is a monster story. Much like a lot of the sci-fi comics of the 1940s and 50s. Bruce's entire existence revolves around control. The lack of it and the need for it. Trying to control his breathing. Trying to control his anger in front of civilians. Trying to control his gamma poisoning. Not being able to control his relationships with the people he loves. Not being able to control the public's perception of him. The guy has no control over anything. So it's immensely satisfying to see him struggle to find normalcy in the world. To see him constantly hide and isolate himself. After Control, his story is about isolation and consequences. The consequences of good intentions. The consequences of tampering with nature. Bruce lives in a dilapidated shithole in Brazil and is constantly on the run from the US government because of the choices he made with gamma radiation. Scrounging for lab parts and working a blue collar job where he can barely even speak the language. The instability and danger of the Hulk makes him a threat and he never has a second to breathe in this film. Always running, hiding, being hunted, being pressed for time, being uncomfortable, being unhappy. Mark Ruffalo's Hulk kills multiple people in Africa during his battle with Hulkbuster and never has a single consequence stem from it. The government doesn't chase him, he doesn't have to hide, and he doesn't learn anything other than, it sucks that I got angry, wish I wouldn't get so angry. He leaves the planet and when he gets back, the Earth is too busy fighting the next alien invasion for anyone to pay attention to him. The Accords are kind of in effect, but they never mention anyone he's ever killed 
or any atrocity he ever committed. Both him and General Ross are finally in the same movie together again after 10 years, and they don't even interact. It's like they didn't even think about it. He sacrifices one of his arms to bring everyone back in Endgame, but he fixes that problem in his very next appearance with Jennifer Superblood. This Bruce never has to live with his mistakes for more than a few moments. He feels far too clean. Now, he did have some of that complex duality in the Avengers, where he's always conflicted about the Hulk coming out and he feels constant guilt about what he is and could be, like his multiple scenes with Natasha when he first meets her and then when he finally hulks out, but even that incredible scene where he can't contain the monster anymore and he unleashes on Black Widow, tearing through pipes, almost ripping her head off, hiding in the shadows like a horror movie. The Incredible Hulk did it first. That scene is almost a carbon copy of the Bottle Factory scene where the Hulk is first unleashed. And at least that one had some collateral damage. He chases Natasha and breaks some stuff in the helicarrier, but no real permanent damage was caused. He destroys the factory and slaughters people in this scene. People die real cause with real effect. And even his most emotional moment in the movie where he talks about surviving a suicide attempt was done first in a deleted scene from The Incredible Hulk. Yes, these moments are great and lead to an awesome fight with Thor and the amazing final battle, but that's one of the problems with Ruffalo's Hulk. They focus more on him being cool and having awesome moments rather than focusing on the dissection of his condition, what it means to be Hulk how it affects the people around him. He almost killed the love of his life when he first turned, so he vows to never make contact with her again. He can only reminisce about her and look at her from a distance. Ruffalo's Hulk doesn't even have a Betty. This entire element is taken away, and the moment they do give him a love interest, they immediately drop it so he can go be a cool gladiator. You see the heartbreak in his eyes during the scene at the university, knowing that he can never be with the woman he loves because it's too dangerous. The longing in his eyes to just touch her again, kiss her, be with her. He's desperate for that intimate human interaction. It's some deep stuff. And when they do get back together, he can't even have sex with her because he's afraid he'll get too excited and hulk out. The man has been stripped of almost every basic element of being a human, of being normal. This Hulk? Not so much. He doesn't have to deal with any consequences. He doesn't have to long for the woman he loves. He doesn't have to hide from society. He's basically a celebrity with full-on merch. The public loves him and wants to take pictures with him. He becomes the king of another planet, and he doesn't feel near as tortured. He has a few moments of isolation and sadness sprinkled out through the franchise, but they're always short-lived so that we can move on to the next story. His themes never get enough time to to breathe, and for that, he suffers. Even in his best appearance, where I think he is the deepest and most nuanced, he reveals in the end that he's always angry and he can transform anytime he wants to. Well, that destroys the entire purpose of his character if he can just control it whenever. It's the exact opposite of Norton's version. It's sacrificing logic and character consistency for a cool moment. And then, in the next film, he can't control it anymore. Anymore? What the fuck? I do think that Ruffalo nails the mannerisms of a misfit scientist more than Norton because he's just a cool guy who kind of just acts like Ed Norton and can somehow parkour like a pro, but the character arc is far less interesting. This is a Hulk that respects the mental anguish of the character, who has Bruce on the run from the government, who has to work to find a cure to his disease, who lives in constant fear of himself, who can't be with the woman he loves, who has to live in exile, who has to constantly constantly work on his breathing, who has to live with the mistakes he made, and who can't even live a normal life without the threat of Hulk constantly creeping into his psyche. This man can't even take a simple shower without getting PTSD, reminding him of the atrocities he's committed and the trauma he's been through. Even when he wins and defeats the bad guy in the end, it's not good enough. He doesn't celebrate, he doesn't get any thanks, he doesn't get a parade thrown for him, he doesn't run over and give Betty a big kiss. Yes. 
he immediately has to run away, starting the cycle all over again. I'm not saying we can't have a more heroic Hulk who the public loves and has awesome, cheer-worthy moments. I'm fine with that Hulk. I love that Hulk in the Avengers. I just prefer the more classical monster tale of the man who is cursed with this inner demon. And I think the MCU lost that at a point. This is a Hulk who can't control his anger, but then suddenly can when the plot needs it, who doesn't have a core love interest that he worries about, who rarely has to face the consequences of his actions, who becomes a naked toddler at one point, gets his ass beaten on a constant basis, who doesn't get stronger the angrier he gets, doesn't have the intimacy issues, gets outsmarted by a teenager, becomes a jokey side character, can't even pronounce Wakanda properly, has no connection to the core plot, fixes his main character flaw off screen, barely takes part of the final battle to save the universe, gets outshined by his cousin who has been Hulk for like three days, then has his child introduced to us for the first time at a family cookout in a show that isn't even his. They introduce his son, one of the biggest developments of his life in an eight second scene. And instead of giving us time to contemplate this huge revelation, they just cut to Matt Murdock making a joke. They took Planet Hulk, one of his most famous comic runs of all time, and morphed it into a side plot in a Thor movie purely to give us laughs. I have a whole video explaining why Hulk is terrible in Endgame and the later MCU movies, so go watch that for a more detailed analysis of Smart Hulk's suckiness. But the Russos didn't know how to use him, they nerfed him, made him into a borderline comedian, these movies haven't respected him, they don't understand him, they push him to the side, use him purely as a plot device, he gets no depth anymore, no powerful moments, other than the snap, which was admittedly really cool. And I'm not even sure if they care about Hulk at this point. This Hulk dabbed different chemical mixtures into beakers to find a cure for his disease, this Hulk just dabs. This Hulk had a rivalry with Abomination. This Hulk is friendly with Abomination. This Hulk had no control of his powers, making him an unstable killing machine. This Hulk has full control of his powers, making him just Mark Ruffalo with a deep voice. This Bruce is a shy, timid guy who rarely speaks unless he has something important to say. This Bruce says things like, bruh, and shut the front door. This Bruce was endless tortured. This Bruce endlessly tortures us. I mean, I know the fighting and destruction isn't the main part of Bruce's character, but we also come to these movies to see Hulk smash. We want to see that moment when he turns and finally starts wrecking some shit. This Hulk has a down and dirty fight with Abomination, featuring punching, kicking, stabbing, blood dripping, yelling, chain choking, grimy wrestling, Hulk smashing, thunderclapping, and using a fucking car as boxing gloves. It was awesome, cathartic, dynamic, engaging. This Hulk throws a couple guys, never smashes, then gets overpowered by a jeep. This isn't a Hulk you fear. It's a Hulk you're supposed to think is cute. It's another adorable and cuddly Disney character that kids wish they could hug. That's the antithesis of what the Hulk should be. And not only did they take his arch rival and turn him into a hippy dippy peace lover, but now they're taking one of his other ones and giving him to Captain America. Hulk can't even have his own villains anymore. It's a damn shame. And it spits in the face of every single Hulk fan around the world. The people that that read comics their entire lives and contributed to the mega success of this franchise. The people that cared deeply about this character and kept him relevant all these years. Tuh. To hell with them. I know it's not all Marvel's fault because they legally can't make a solo movie about him for a few more years, but this is the best you got? You can still use him as a side character, and this is what you turn him into? I'm not saying Edward Norton's Hulk is one of the greatest MCU characters to ever exist, but if he would have stayed on and continued that journey from that movie, Bruce Banner would be a far more thematically rich character and way more enjoyable to watch. Ruffalo 
feels like he's in cruise control at this point, as if he's gotten too comfortable in the role. And I truly don't give a damn about what they do with him in the future. His son, World War Hulk, Secret Wars. I couldn't care less about this dopey marshmallow man story anymore. He's an embarrassment to good characters. He's an embarrassment to the character of Hulk. He's a waste of space. He gets worse and worse with every appearance. And he's just become a plot device used to get other characters to where they need to go. It's true what they say. You don't know what you got till it's gone. It's no secret that the MCU has been lacking in quality lately, and I think there is no better example of this than Hulk. You can actually see good storytelling, compelling writing, natural emotion, real stakes, and consistent character choices die over the past 10 years. I'm sorry I doubted you, Eddie. You are by far the superior adaptation of the Jade Giant. But the real question is, do you agree with me? Who is the best version of the Hulk in the MCU? They both have good and bad qualities. So what do you like and dislike about each of them? I'd love to hear your thoughts. All right, that's it for me. Until we meet again, my friends, peace out.